Hey Flower Tribe, it's Kelly Lehman and Lucy Lehman and today I want to take you on a very quick garden tour through my May garden. I'm going to show you the back end of the secret garden and I'm also going to show you some of the first peonies that are coming up on the field. So let's dive right in. If we haven't met yet, it's nice to meet you. My name is Kelly Lehman and I'm the owner of Cranberry Fields Flower Farm here in Cranberry, New Jersey. And I love giving you guys fun free flower tips. So please feel free to subscribe to this YouTube channel and hit that bell notification so you know whenever I post another fun free flower tip video. So let's dive right in. So here it is. It is May and we're in my New Jersey flower farm and garden and we're a planting hardiness zone six and I wanted to show you what some of these beautiful flowers look like that we have going out the barn door this week. Uh, these are some snowball viburnum. I'm going to show you what those look like on the actual plant when we get to the secret garden. They're absolutely beautiful and I'm going to show you what some of my first blooming peonies look like right now. So we had a few 90 degree days here in Cranberry, New Jersey, which is so rare for May. And some of these peonies just like burst open like overnight. So they're absolutely beautiful. I love peonies. Uh, I love them second only to hydrangea. And these are a gorgeous, easy, no fuss flower to grow in your garden. Once they're established, they pretty much, you know, last for years and years. Some gardeners have even said that they last for up to 100 years. And the trick to peonies is to not plant them too deep. So a lot of times, you know, Flower Tribe members will send in, oh, I've had peonies for all these years. I never get any blooms. I always have those beautiful green leaves, but no flowers. And most of the time that's because they're planted too deeply. So make sure that when you do plant your peony flowers, that you put them in the ground and there's only an inch or two of soil above like the highest eye. And that's kind of like the trick to growing great peonies. And I'm going to make a video showing you some other great tips, but that's my number one tip that a lot of times they're just planted too deeply. So this is what these gals look like now. And a lot of times there's also uh, some ants on these plants and that's not a big deal guys. A lot of times gardeners are worried, oh, this all these ants on my peonies and it's not a big deal. They're just kind of licking some of that nectar off of that top tight ball. Sometimes you'll see them on a peony in a stage like this and it's not that big of a deal. Oh, here's a little guy right now. So they're just kind of licking off some of the nectar that was on these tighter blooms and eventually they just kind of leave it alone. And even if they're in this big full blown open stage, and you see some ants on them, they're still not damaging the flower. So it's not that big of a deal. I would not worry about it. And when I do come in here to cut, if there's some ants on these, you know, blooms that are opened up, I just kind of take them and, and I'll put them closer to the ground. I'll give them like a little shake, shake, shake. And then a lot of times the ants will, you know, kind of fall right off to the grass. And then you don't have to worry about bringing ants into your house when you bring in your peony flowers. Let's go take a trip over to the secret garden and I'll show you what that looks like. I'm in back of my secret garden and this plant in back of me is not a hydrangea. And a lot of people have asked me to suggest like very early blooming hydrangeas that come out in spring. Uh, and my Annabelles and Incredibles don't come out until like the end of May or early June. But these are called Snowball Viburnum and they actually start to bloom in April. So here it is, it's about like May 18th, and I've had beautiful, beautiful blooms from this plant from like, I say like the second week in April, they came in a gorgeous green color. They were absolutely magnificent. And then they changed over to this white color and they have a great vase life. And I absolutely adore this plant. So this plant actually took over this entire garden bed. So I love the way it looks. It took a really long time to get established though. I mean, these plants are probably like five or six years old. The first two years, I hardly got anything from them. I got like bupkis. And then all of a sudden they took off and now they're about, I don't know, maybe about 10 or 15 feet tall. The only thing that I had to consider was there was a lot of plants around it, like this hydrangea over here. So right now this plant is really casting too much shade on this mop head hydrangea. And what I'm going to have to do is make sure that I cut these branches back right now. Otherwise this hydrangea is not going to bloom. I actually move a lot of my plants around in my garden the way that some people move their furniture around in their houses. So I'll probably come in here in fall and I'll wind up moving this hydrangea to a place where it's going to be happier and it's not going to have so much shade cast on it. This guy over here should be fine. The one right next to it. Once I cut off all those blooms, I'm going to make a whole bunch of beautiful 
beautiful flower arrangements. And then in the middle over here, I've got a limelight hydrangea, if you can kind of tell back here. So if I cut off some of these branches here to do like flower arrangements, I'm going to wind up freeing up that, you know, shady spot that is casting on that limelight. And I'll probably cut this guy right about here so that I leave some extra leaves on this branch. Okay, so now we're kind of in the middle of this uh, bed here. So these are two limelight hydrangeas. They're going to do just fine. In back of it, I've got some gorgeous crepe myrtle trees that are going to be in full bloom uh, in a couple months. This is what the secret garden looks like in August. Those pink flowers in the back are the crepe myrtle. They're really tall. Those are the trees. And you're going to see some extra hydrangeas that are the white right there. And those purple flowers to the left of the hydrangeas are my Joe Pie weed. We're going to come down and zoom on them again right now. So they're kind of like right in the middle. And I'm going to tell you all about Joe Pie weed now. This is my Joe Pie weed coming up. And this is a super invasive plant. But I love it because where it grows, it stops the weeds from growing. And the pollinators love it. It gets super tall, but it can take over my entire back garden. But I'm okay with that because I'm not back there weeding. Just showing you a small part of the garden right now. I want to show you another part that's coming up. I've got a whole bunch of Wygela that's on the farm over here. And I want to show you some of the other rows that I have on the farm too. I just love, love, love this shrub. So this is that beautiful Wygela plant close up. And once these really pretty white and pink blossoms fall to the ground, you can tell I have a whole bunch of them down on the ground over here. Then we are going to have beautiful, beautiful variegated green leaves. And a lot of times I'll use these variegated green leaves in our flower arrangements. So we'll use them in place of like regular ferns or regular greens because they're just so much more beautiful than just like the regular greens that you'd see normally. And I have another one back over here. You could tell it's like in the corner over here. This is a different type of Wajila that I want to show you. It's called Wine, and it just has these deeper, more like magenta colored, red colored blooms. And they're super beautiful. They're very stunning. They look great in your spring garden. And it's the same thing as the other Wajila plant I just showed you, where eventually these beautiful flowers will drop off. And then you've got some really interesting leaves that are this gorgeous burgundy color. And I have this scattered throughout my whole garden because in spring, there's not that many flowers or shrubs that give you that burst of color super early. So these gals have been blooming since, I guess like since like the first week in May. And uh, they're gonna bloom probably for about two to three weeks before they start losing those flowers. And I'm gonna show you how I kind of have them sprinkled throughout my garden. So I've got one here. I've got that pink one that I showed you just a little while ago over here. And then I've got one over here. And these guys have beautiful, beautiful, beautiful um, red blooms that are going to start opening up. And then they've got these gorgeous green leaves. So there's all different types of varieties of this. And then you can see that I've got more back here, these little pink guys over here. And then I've got two more back here. I've got another red. And I've got another pink. And then I've got a peony plant that's coming up over here. They're just about ready to burst. And these gals are looking really good right now. These are my lilacs that were in bloom just a couple weeks ago. This white lilac was absolutely magnificent. And the fragrance of a lilac is just heavenly. So this guy did really good. But I want to tell you about a blunder that I did with this lilac over here. As you can tell, I've got a lot of gaps. Last year, we wound up using a lot of these green branches for some of our bouquets that we ship. And they looked beautiful. I love them. They had a great vase life. They were spectacular. But I didn't realize that a lot of this year's flowers Flowers were actually starting to be set in place on these branches, kind of like your hydrangeas. So like a lot of you know that hydrangeas, like your Endless Summer, your Nico, a lot of your mop heads, they will start forming like this summer's flowers this prior season, so like way back in like fall. So these guys form their flowers even earlier. So when I came out here at the end of spring, early summer, we cut a whole bunch out here. I basically cut off all my flowers. So just, you know, a little, you know, word to the wise, know that your lilacs are putting their flowers in place now. So you might not want to cut into them too much. You can cut those blooms off as, you know, as they're in bloom and they look beautiful, and then you'll get more blooms next year. But if you wait like a couple weeks after their bloom, I wouldn't touch them. I wouldn't do any kind of heavy pruning because you'll wind up with this barren tree. So, but next year I think they're going to come back. So it's not a big deal. Very few things are a big deal in the garden. I These are a row of my lilac bushes and they're a different variety than the regular common lilac. I'm not exactly sure which variety they are. I think they might be a Miss Kim, but they're just super delicate 
and they're not those giant, giant petals that you see on your common lilac, but they're still beautiful. I wanted to show you one of my favorite early blooming spring flowers. So underneath this lilac tree are my hellebores. And if you watch some of my other videos, I showed you when these first started coming out to bloom in March. And here it is, it's like, you know, the, the middle of May and these hellebores are still going strong. So I've got a whole bunch of them planted underneath this lilac tree because they like semi shade. So the ones that were planted in a little bit of a sunnier spot, they wound up blooming a little bit earlier. So this whole row of flowers has been blooming since March. So if you kind of see it wrapped around the base of this lilac bush and every year it just expands. It gives me more and more flowers and these are the ones that started blooming in March and they were beautiful, beautiful colors of white and purple and they were just outstanding. So this is a really fun early bloomer for your garden. They're super easy to maintain. Once they get established, I basically leave them alone. I don't fertilize them. I don't prune them back. So they add for that really early burst of color like the snowball viburnum and like the white gila. Over here, I've got a butterfly bush that I love because it attracts loads and loads of butterflies. And we did a heavy pruning on this in the beginning of spring when there was hardly any new growth. And it's gonna just give me bushels and bushels and bushels of those gorgeous flowers that the pollinators love, the butterflies love them, the bees love them, and so we did that way back in early spring. These are some beautiful red roses that I have growing on the front of my house. I have them trained to kind of grow throughout this beautiful trellis in the back, and when these canes are a little bit smaller, when the plant is younger, I just kind of weave them in and out throughout the little holes, and then as the plant gets bigger, it's supported by the structure. And it's just a really pretty look for the front of my house. I love roses against stone. Thank you so much for joining me in this video. And please feel free to say hi to us over on my Cranberry Fields Instagram page and also on my Kelly Lehman's Flower Tribe Facebook group because there's thousands of gardeners from all over the world and they're asking and answering tons of questions over there. And please check out my new podcast. Uh, all these are in links and descriptions below. And I also have links to my new online flower courses that teach you how to grow a beautiful fresh cut flower garden just like this and then how to arrange those beautiful blooms into gorgeous arrangements arrangements for your home or to gift to your family and friends. And please let me know where you're viewing this from in this great big beautiful world. I love to see how our flower tribe is growing around the globe each week and I will see you in the next video. And then back here, who are you guys? Oh my goodness. Are they called bee bomb? What are they called? You know, this, this whole little shrub over here. I don't want to say shrub. And like the wagila. Did I say that wrong? Hold on. All right, time out here to meet you. My name is Kelly Lehman and I'm the owner of Cranberry Fields. <laughs> I totally forgot what I do. What, who am I? Identity crisis. Hold on. So let's go uh, take a ride over to, so let's go. We're let's sorry, go take the number you have over. dialed let's is not take... in service at this time. Mm -hmm.